themed after colonial America, replicas of both Liberty Bell and Liberty Tree can be found in Magic Kingdom's smallest land. Today we're going to explore Liberty Square here on Walt Disney World Adults Only. <laughs> I'm Dan and you're watching Walt Disney World Adults Only. Today I'm going to be joined by our lovely Geordie presenter Helen and we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Liberty Square in Disney's Magic Kingdom Park. Specifically we're going to be looking at the attractions, the places to eat and drink and also the shops there too. Two Brits discussing American history. What could possibly go wrong here, I wonder. So we already have videos on Frontierland and Adventureland. This video today is the third in this series. I'll put a link to the first two videos in the description below, should you wish to watch those as well. Liberty Square is the smallest of the Magic Kingdom lands and is actually unique to Walt Disney World. Liberty Square opened in 1971 on the opening day of Magic Kingdom. It was one of the original Magic Kingdom lands but it's the only land at Magic Kingdom that has had no major upgrade since it opened in the past 50 years. Disneyland has a New Orleans Square, but when Walt Disney World was being designed, the Imagineers wanted something more early American, 18th century themed, with a focus on the American Revolutionary War. Are you ready, Helen? Yes, Dan, I'm certainly ready. I'll start off with some facts about Liberty Square. Liberty Square was set in colonial times and Disney went all out with their theming to stick to this timeline. This land is the only one in Magic Kingdom that doesn't have any public restrooms. Colonial America didn't exactly have indoor plumbing, so when those chamber pots needed emptied, they certainly were, and usually right out onto the road. Of course, there also weren't gutters or sewers as we know them today. So what resulted was a literal river of waste flowing down the same roads that people walked on. This brown pavement seen in Liberty Square is there specifically to replicate this idea. So guests visiting Liberty Square will have to visit a neighbouring land to use the restroom, either Fantasyland or Frontierland. Although public restrooms aren't available, Liberty Square's restaurants do have restrooms. Another detail is the addresses on the buildings. The number on each door represents the year in which that style of door came to be in the architectural history of this era. For example, if you add an 18 in front of any address, that will give you the corresponding year. So are you ready now to discover Liberty Square? Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Now, when I think about Liberty Square, the first thing that comes to mind is the Hall of Presidents. Not because I'm a fan, and that isn't anti-American, because I wouldn't be interested in a Hall of Prime Ministers either. But because this land is kind of the grown-up land, and in my head, the Hall of Presidents symbolises Liberty Square. Of course, Haunted Mansion is far more popular, but it isn't exactly in the square, is it? Anyway, I haven't visited the Hall of Presidents since 2001, and even then it was only to escape from the Florida heat. So Helen, tell us all about the Hall of Presidents. Are you a fan of this attraction? I agree with you, Dan. This isn't an attraction I would visit on every trip. In fact, I only visited this attraction for the first time in my visit in January 2020. The Hall of Presidents was Walt's idea during the creation of Magic Kingdom, and the Imagineers worked hard to bring his vision to life. The Hall of Presidents was an opening day attraction, and guests get to see every United States president in one place. And when you wait for the show to start, there are some exciting pieces of history to explore in the lobby. Artifacts from past presidents and first ladies line the walls of the lobby each with a story or history behind the displayed item. The lobby is also home to the carpet displaying the official presidential seal. Other than the White House, this is the only place that the presidential seal can be used. Once seated in the theatre, guests watch a short film on the history of the United States. 
This includes a segment on the Civil War that comes complete with an appearance on stage by an audio animatronic Abraham Lincoln. This show-stopping moment is still to come though, and it arrives when the film ends and guests are introduced to every single American president. The whole show lasts approximately 25 minutes. Although I did find Hall of Presidents very interesting, it's definitely a one and done for me. So yes, Dan, this isn't one for me either. Now I know that our Facebook group members voted Haunted Mansion number one attraction at Magic Kingdom during our live stream show. And I know that you love this one, Dan. Can you tell us about this iconic attraction? Sure, Helen, you're right. It was voted number one and it would make my top five Magic Kingdom attractions. I absolutely love it. Going back to my first experience, it was actually at Fountain Manor at Euro Disney, or Disneyland Paris as it's now called, and honestly, I fell in love. The attention to detail, the theming, the immersiveness, it's just outstanding. So the Haunted Mansion is an original opening day attraction, which makes it almost 50 years old. It is a dark ride, through the Haunted Mansion, which is home to 999 Happy Haunts. And yes, they have room for one more. So this is an Omnimover type ride, a rider's ride in doom buggy type cars, with the help of some narration by the ghost host. Even the queue for this ride is heavily themed. So much to do and see what's queuing, and so many clever little touches added to literally everything. The cast members working on this attraction are typically in character too, and that really, really adds to the immersiveness of this attraction as well. So when you first enter the Haunted Mansion, there's kind of a pre-ride show where you go inside the stretching room. The first time that I experienced this, I was completely mind blown. Was I going up or down? Was I moving? Was the room moving? I really, really couldn't work it out. Interestingly, I now know at Disneyland Paris, I was in fact moving. The stretching room is a kind of elevator that takes you down to the ride. But at Walt Disney World, you don't move at all. It's the ceiling that moves. The combination of these two different experiences confused me for literally years. This is a slow ride that takes you through a variety of different scenes. A seance conducted by Madame Leota, a party in the Grand Hall, and a fearsome bride in the attic. It isn't scary, just a little spooky, and the ghosts are very friendly indeed. There is a really cool backstory to Haunted Mansion 2, which I would thoroughly recommend that you read up on. It's too long to run through here and now. It would kind of be a whole video. Oh, perhaps we could discuss it in a future video, Helen. I think that's a great idea. It would make a really good future video, and we could compare all the Haunted Mansions from all of the parks. Haunted Mansion would be in my top five too. I much prefer the standby line on this attraction as there's so much to see and do. I especially love to read the rhymes on the headstones and only on my last visit did I notice that Madame Leota comes to life on her headstone. There's so much going on throughout this ride that I feel like I see something different every time I ride it. And don't forget, smile for your on-ride photo. My favourite part is the ballroom scene. I love to watch the two men duel in the portraits. So yes, I agree, this is a classic Magic Kingdom attraction. So what's next? Liberty Square Riverboat? Yes, Liberty Square Riverboat. I've been on this a few times and I have to say it's a really nice relaxing ride around the rivers of America on what is essentially an authentic steam powered paddle wheeler. Now this is a colonial era Liberty Bell Riverboat and it basically goes on a half a mile tour around Tom Sawyer Island. It is a 17 minute voyage and you will see an early American settlement, an idyllic Native American village, Harper's Mill, Fort Langhorne, Wilson's Cave Inn, and some woodland animals too. You will also get some unique views of Big Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain, and the Haunted Mansion, so have your cameras ready. The Liberty Bell is 47 feet tall, and is a reproduction of a working vessel that ferry people up and down the Mississippi. An actual steam engine converts water from the river into steam, which then powers the large paddle, which propels the boat. I actually think this is stunning. I love to watch, but I rarely bought it for the tour. I'm definitely doing it on my next trip though. So what about you, Helen? Are you a fan? Actually, I'm not a fan of 
actually Dan, before my last trip I wasn't a fan because I didn't really want to waste precious ride time, but I was so wrong. I was really pleased that we tried it on our last trip. Well Dan, they're the only attractions in Magic Kingdom's smallest land. But before we move on, I'd just like to mention the Liberty Bell. The Liberty Bell you see in Liberty Square is a very special replica, created from the exact same mould as the original Liberty Bell. In 1976, to celebrate the 200th anniversary of America declaring its independence, 50 replicas of the Liberty Bell were made and sent out to every state. According to Disney legend, Pennsylvania already having the real Liberty Bell didn't have much use for a replica. On the 4th of July 1989, Pennsylvania's replica bell made its way to Magic Kingdom, making Florida the only state to have two of the replica bells. Now I know how much you love Disney dining as much as me, so I think we should move on to the restaurants. And we'll start off with my favourite, Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow is a quick service restaurant near the entrance to Liberty Square just over the bridge. Tucked into a cobblestone corner, this small restaurant provides a fantastic view of Cinderella's castle. The selections are limited, but also unique to this location. The quick service entrees available include a sweet and spicy chicken waffle, a fresh fruit waffle sandwich and a chocolate hazelnut spread and a few snack items including the classic funnel cake dusted with icing sugar and my favourite the strawberries and cream waffle. Entries range between $6 to $11 and when the Disney dining plan is available you can use your snack credits. This is especially good on the breakfast items. We really enjoy eating here for breakfast every time we visit with relatively short wait times to be served. My go-to snack is always the strawberries and cream on a Mickey waffle, but I'm definitely trying that fresh fruit waffle on my next visit. It looks delicious. Although the seating is outdoors, it feels quite peaceful and sheltered, but watch out for those ducks. I think they like a Mickey waffle too. So Dan, have you eaten at Sleepy Hollow? Yes, I have Helen, but only once I believe. It was on my last trip and I tried the funnel cake with the powdered sugar. I wasn't a fan to be honest and left about half of it. My sister-in-law tells me that I made an epic mistake in having the powdered sugar and that I should have gone for the strawberries and cream version. So on my next trip, I'm gonna try a funnel cake with strawberries and cream to see if I like that more. And I think I probably will. Moving on to one of the best restaurants in the whole of Magic Kingdom, located in Liberty Square, Liberty Tree Tavern. Well, I have nothing but good things to say about this restaurant and it's the one where you can get the Thanksgiving dinner. And wow, it is so great. Themed as a stately colonial style inn, this restaurant is on my list for every trip right now. It's just wonderful. Taylor recently did a vlog all about this restaurant during her recent trip with her husband, Jake. I'll put a link in the description below so you can watch for yourselves. But the dinner here is served family style and starts with fresh bread and salad, followed by turkey, hot roasted beef and oven roasted pork. It comes with French beans, mashed potato, herb stuffing, mac and cheese and gravy. Unlimited food, but save room for one of the best desserts in the whole of Walt Disney World, the ooey gooey toffee cake. During normal times, Liberty Tree Tavern also offers an a la carte lunch menu, but you can get that Thanksgiving dinner for lunch or for dinner. I haven't tried the a la carte options yet, as that Thanksgiving dinner still haunts my dreams to this day. Helen, I don't think you've eaten here before. Can you please explain to us why? I haven't, Dan. And my only excuse would be that I haven't eaten at many table service restaurants in the parks. But you make it sound so good that I think I might have to reconsider. So, moving on to Columbia Harbour House. This restaurant is technically located in Fantasyland and Liberty Square. Inside the restaurant closer to Fantasyland, the restaurant is themed to Europe, but as you move through the restaurant and out the door to Liberty Square, it changes to more of American decor. The quick service restaurant has some great choices on its menu, with most entrees coming in under $14. It specialises in seafood, however other options are available and you can choose from shrimp and chicken nugget combo, a shrimp skewer, chicken pot pie, and I hear a rumour that one of Dan's favourites is a lobster roll. On a side note, if you have any allergies, there's a vast amount of choice on their allergy-free menu. This restaurant always seems popular when I visit and only recently did I discover that there was an upstairs, so I'm definitely checking that out next time I visit. 
On our last trip, my family and I shared the trio platter, which consists of shrimp, chicken nuggets, and battered fish, and we had some French fries. And there was more than enough for four of us to share. I understand that Columbia Harbour House is your favourite quick service restaurant at Magic Kingdom, Dan. You have been paying attention. Yes, Columbia Harbour House is my favourite quick service at Magic Kingdom. And I really love the upstairs. You can kind of go up there in the air conditioning, enjoy some really good food and escape the madness of Magic Kingdom. It is so cool. And if you get a window seat, you can watch the people from above. I absolutely love it. And yes, for me, it's all about that lobster roll. I do need to try something else, but it honestly is so good. And with that, we have covered all the restaurants of Liberty Square. Shall we move on to the shops now, Helen? Would you like to start us off with Memento Mori? One of the most recent additions to Liberty Square is Memento Mori, a dedicated gift shop for Haunted Mansion. This opened in October 2014 and replaced Yankee Trader. Rumour has it that Memento Mori is owned by Madame Leota and you can see many references to her around the stall, including some of her personal belongings and a portrait. Prior to Memento Mori, Haunted Mansion merchandise was sold in a kiosk located outside the attraction in a Romani caravan. You'll also find the cast members here are dressed slightly different to the maids and the butlers on the Haunted Mansion ride. The main difference being a slightly lighter colour scheme and on their tie, there's a button that represents Madame Leota's gravestone, which I mentioned earlier and you can see located outside of the Haunted Mansion. You may see Madame Leota's spell book located inside the store. And if you listen very carefully, you may also hear her voice. The merchandise here is all based on the Haunted Mansion. You can get anything from puzzles to t-shirts, hoodies, and even a ghost in a jar. This is one of my favourite shops on property. Dan, do you want to tell us about Ye Oldie Christmas Shop? Sure, it's such a cute little shop. I remember the first time I saw it thinking to myself, why is there a Christmas shop open in September? But it's actually a permanent fixture. And now it's somewhere that I really love to explore. You can get some really great things in here. I have bought a few ornaments in here over the years but I must confess to preferring the Christmas shop at Disney Springs. It's kind of bigger, with much more variety, and you can get things personalised as well. I'm not sure if the old Christmas shop at Magic Kingdom does personalisation. This is a great shop though, I visit every trip, and this is one of my favourite places to watch the parade from as well. One other shop that looks really great is the Liberty Square Portrait Gallery. The Portrait Gallery is located in Liberty Square near to the Hall of Presidents, and this is your one-stop shop for caricatures, silhouettes, and detailed portraits whilst you wait. These amazing artists will astound you with their craft. So much talent, and not everyone knows that this shop is here. I would absolutely love a caricature of you, Helen. Anyway, tell us about the remaining shops, and then I think our mission for today is complete. Oh, Dan, you see the nicest things. <laughs> I'll make sure I get a caricature of myself on my next visit. The last couple of shops I'd like to talk about are Liberty Square Market and the Parasol Cart. Liberty Square Market is a quick service location offering healthy snacks. When the dining plan's available, you can use your snack credits to purchase trail mix, fruit and an assortment of drinks. I definitely recommend checking this location out if you're looking for a healthy snack on your day in Magic Kingdom. And lastly, Liberty Square Parasols. This is located next to Sleepy Hollow Refreshments and is the place where you can get beautiful personalised parasols. This is an outdoor kiosk that is hard to miss with all the beautiful parasols on display outside. Even if you're not shopping for a parasol, I would definitely recommend that you stop by and check out all the custom artwork on these beautiful parasols. Oh, you've missed something out, Dan. The Muppets present Great Moments in American History. Now I know this show isn't currently running, but let's hope it returns when things get back to normal. It ran from October 2016 to February 2020. Before we finish, maybe we could take a quick look at this wonderful show. You're right, Helen, it was such a fun show and what a great use of the space of Liberty Square having a street show in effect from the windows. Anyway, here is a clip of the show. That wasn't good. That was glorious. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey Sam, I guess no. You're the town crier. Just <laughs> ring the bell. Let freedom ring! No more Great job! Great moment in history, the 4th day of July. Great moment in history, we said King George the Here's what you will take away in all your minds and hearts. Great moment in history, great moment in history, great moment in history. Just the American 
Oh, that's brought back some great memories. I love the Muppets. Well, that brings us to the end of our adventure of exploring Liberty Square. We didn't do too bad for a couple of Brits. As you can tell, we both love aspects of Liberty Square. What about you? Do you love it? What's your favourite thing to do? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you so much for your help today, Helen. You've done a great job. Next up in this series will be Fantasyland, so please look out for that in the future. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Please also click subscribe and hit the notification bell as well so you know when our videos land. We will be continuing this conversation in our adult only Facebook group. If you're not already a member, please join us today. We will put a link in the description below. And remember, never grow up. That's right, Helen. Please, please, never grow up. <laughs>